Peter said he'll be here once this don't work, but I mean, there's three of us. You want to yeah, make a motion to uh, open the uh, finance meeting. Second. All right, so we'll get started. <laughs> no, I make a motion to start on time. I know Peter is on his way, um, and Jen should be too, so we'll just get started. When they get here, they get here. So with that, uh, motion was to start the finance committee meeting for february 17th at 6 30. there was seconded all yes, in favor aye. Aye. all opposed make a motion to take item number one off the uh the well, like, well, hold on I, I did get an email with regards to item number six because there was a time constraint okay so take a make a motion make a motion to take item number six sure all in favor aye. Aye. opposed financial transfer of thirty thousand from free cash to veteran benefits guys come on in it, yep Take the chairs here. Or do, you, do you want to leave me? <laughs> so we're coming from last year, as you said earlier, 190,000. Okay. So why don't you explain the what's going on, why the additional cash? And I know we did give you more in the budget, but you know, explain best you can. And uh, Councilor Tallman just arrived. Right. something happens it's two thousand per Three thousand, yeah, roughly. Okay. 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 So Jim and then Linda. Thank you, sir. Councilor Thank you. Shatnoff got here. Sorry, Jimmy. No, it's okay. Thank you so much for coming down, sir. Um, so just back up a second. So uh, you say on an average you see fifty-seven veterans. And are they uh, new people, or is it 57 new people each month, or is it 57? Uh, it varies. I mean, some months we have two, three, maybe four, other months we lose six. Actually, work eight. Now at 200. Our job is to find all alternative sources of income, social security benefits, some circumstances, pensions, service connected disabilities. Okay. What's it's two hundred percent of the uh, federal poverty level? What is that? A week? Uh, I mean a month. I can't argue with these numbers. You guys do a great job. Thank you. 
a secondary provider, so I think it's going to be benefit. So. So, so if I'm a veteran, which I'm not, but if I was, um, would I be going to the, uh, the Hoyoke Soldiers Home? Would I be going to the VA up in Leeds? Would I be going to, would I be going to all three? How does that work? We basically recommend two people. Okay, and you can branch out and tell them where they need to go? Okay. All right, so if I was, um, and the reason I'm asking these questions, they seem kind of remedial, but we have people calling. So if I have a veteran that's calling or a, vet, a veteran's uh, widow that needs some help with um, some sort of, uh, you know, medication or whatnot, they go through you first, then you would send them either to the uh, soldier's home or to Leeds. Yes. Okay, all right. I appreciate yeah. for that. That's good. So uh, once uh, one, once a person's back in the Hoyoke, they've been a veteran, so their insurance is now covered by the city, or is it covered by the federal government, or both? It's, it's, it's really a combination of both. Okay. So if they're elderly people, we would put in getting on Part D. 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 Hopefully we focus on not so much the inexpensive. Hopefully we we'll work on the right plan for the right person. Exactly. You know, I, the shine people, okay. Uh, at the senior center, most of the recommendations for which insurance policy is best for the All right. Well, you you have a very important role, um, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for coming down, Jim. And um, I just have a couple of general questions. One I think you already answered, but I just want to validate it. It looks like um, from the earlier numbers that you stated with three to six coming off the rolls and four to six coming on, that seems like the number of actual clients is fairly stable at this point. Is okay. Okay, so you do you anticipate right, right? So you anticipate it being in the this range going forward from say fifty seven, plus or minus two. Mm -hmm. And my other general question is, I know you have to wait for the state reimbursement. Yes. How long are you finding that you're waiting now? I say this every year. Uh, they have the state. Yeah. How long was the wait? Is it 18, 9 to 12 months? 9 to 12 months. Long time. Long time. So, We should try paying our taxes like that, huh? <laughs> should bring Richie Neal um, And then guys. my last question is, when we do get paid? It goes directly into the general fund. Yep. Correct. But are we getting, I mean, are we filling things out completely enough and accurately enough so that when we do get the reimbursement, even though it's late, we are collecting the Massive. major amount of it? We're not losing money for failure to file or filing incompletely or anything like that? Because no. that in the distant past, that had been a problem. This year, uh, both Wilfredo, my deputy, and myself, mm -hmm. have both become state certified. 
Okay. 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 All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. And uh, okay. Well, thank you very much for sharing that, and I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> He's running the meeting now. <laughs> I, I appreciate the work you're doing. And, um, I started a little bit late. I had a, another um, function tonight before I got here. Um, we talked a couple years ago about the um, out for in the house. Compared to last year, and I know you probably were here last year, this seems I about. Think it was the year, like the oh, was yeah. this about the same amount of money? No, last year was 190. Oh, you're doing a lot. We gave them more That's in the budget. They, they yeah, more, more, yeah. more <laughs> we didn't cut it, so, yeah. so it's a lot, much better. Fine tuning it, so you're getting it to a point where, yeah. Motion to approve it. Second. Second. Motion is to approve, and it was seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank Good you. night. Thank you. So we'll go right back to number one, make a motion to move from the table. Second. Uh, item number one, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thanks, um, That the Board of Water Commissioners uh, come before the committee to update us on various financial matters. Related to the department and its operations. Gentlemen, come on in, take a seat. All right. So the I don't know if it's broadcast or not. Yeah, it's not. It's 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 
Yeah. 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 So you can see this. So the the UV facility went online October first, two thousand fifteen, as scheduled and as required by the Department of Environmental Protection as a part of our two year extension for meeting the uh, LT two rule. The um, there was a violation which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes, but the facility incorporates two UV reactors, Calgon reactors, and they're capable, each unit is capable of treating the capacity of the facility, which is 14.8 uh, million gallons per day. We have two reactors for redundancy purposes, so if one reactor goes down, there is continuous treatment. Each reactor has five UV bulbs in it. Each bulb is 10,000 watts, so it's 50,000 watts in there for, for treatment. Uh, when we do the calibrations, we have to wear eye protection because of the um, hazard with regards to the UV light blinding permanently. The facility is uh, two levels. The upper level has the controllers that uh, monitors uh, various requirements, the state flow, sensitivity, um, the, um, um, and other factors that's required. We did have a violation, and the reason we had a violation, it was not a treatment violation. We had a violation with regards to monitoring. We have sent out a letter. The state required us to issue a, a, a release to all the residents. What essentially happened was that the units went online October 1st, but we were unable to have the new UV system, the controllers communicate with the existing computer system. So they weren't talking. And as a result, we weren't able to generate the information or the data that were required on a continuous basis. So what we were doing as the state required was to grab that information. Um, in consideration of that, we upped the sensitivity of the units, so we went from a two log removal to a three log removal, meaning that we were treating higher than required. Uh, since that happened, 60 days went by, and we were able to uh, buy um, a um, communicator that uh, allows the two units now to uh, to talk to one another. So we are we are meeting the requirements as far as data collection. So. That has been satisfied. The actual cost of the project is about $100,000 under budget, around $3.1 million. We did have a little over $30,000 in change orders, which is about 1% of the project cost. So it was designed very well. And hopefully we can um, uh, postpone filtration five to 10 years as a result of this new treatment. And as also as a result of the new treatment, we're working to lower our chlorine levels. So as a result of lowering the chlorine levels, we're able to reduce the amount of disinfection byproducts that are formed, halocetic acids and THMs, trihalomethanes. So there's a lot of benefits as a result of the, the new UV facility. As far as maintenance costs, there, we've, we've realized a considerable increase in, in power costs. Our, our electrical costs have gone up about $3,000 a month. And also the cost of the bulbs that are replaced annually, we're looking at about thirty to forty thousand dollars in material costs. And there's also a lot of additional, a lot of additional um, reporting requirements by the state. And there's also a lot of calibration that takes place. And we had to buy a lot of the calibration units, so that 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 can be accomplished. So it's pretty much all the information I have as far as the uh, the facility is concerned. Um, talk a little bit about the finances. Do you have any questions regarding the plan? Yeah, I know. So the order that's in front of us is an informational meeting on the Board of the Water Commissioners, and I thank you for coming in. You, um, uh, like many of our department heads, always have all the facts and figures, and I always appreciate when you come in. Um, but, you know, some of the thoughts that I have uh, regarding the financial uh, side of the Water uh, water Department is... Um, no, just saying. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it looks like a big file cabinet to me. Um, uh, 
one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, so this is in charge, this is what we're talking about, this infrared thing. It's, am I right in saying that, infrared? UV, UV treatment, UV, UV disinfection. UV <laughs> disinfection, okay. So how many reservoirs uh, are you responsible? I should say you and the commissioners. How many res reservoirs does the city of Hoyoke own? Six, right? Oh, th there's five. There's five? Uh, one that's drained out in uh, uh, West Hampton. That's the white reservoir. You have the Thai Harmony, which is so the primary. The, the one in Southampton, we don't no longer get water from. The, the the one at the white the white reservoir, which is in West Hampton. Yeah. That's drained. Okay. That was drained uh, back in the uh, the eighties. Okay. So um, we, but we have, still own the land, though, right? We still have. It's all part of the same watershed of the Thai Carmody Reservoir. Okay. All, all it is is just an additional impound. It doesn't contribute to the yield of the city's um, water supply. Then that was just an overflow. That's it. Right? Yeah. Okay. So they made it. It's going to be what a million and a half they do. So oh, potentially, I mean, is that land we can sell then? No, no. We're not no, utilizing no. it? It's all part of the same watershed. It all drains right into the Thai Carmody anyway. Okay. So, and it was, it's a drop in the bucket compared to our primary supply. Our primary reservoir is uh, 4.8 billion gallons. The uh, the white reservoir. Where's that? that? Where's our primary one? Southampton. Southampton. Okay, so there's Southampton. West Hampton. There you go. And there's about, we own, the city of Hoyoke owns about, just under 5,000 acres of, of watershed property, or about 50% of the watershed, is owned by the city of Hoyoke. And how many employees do you have running these five reservoirs and everything else we do in the streets? Well, for our grounds maintenance, we have three three employees. For, so grounds maintenance, uh, they they handle all of the, the the mowing, they handle the dam maintenance, they handle all the the the, uh, the um, maintenance around the the different facilities that we have in the city of Hoyoke. And what about the uh, the people who, you know, dig up the uh, the street and, and and check on the the pipes and that sort of thing? Service employees, we have about ten employees. To total number of employees in the department right now is twenty five. Twenty five, right. including you, including myself. So why are you hiring you? So let me ask you, why are you guys falling short compared to the, the Department of Public Works or the Gas and Electric? I mean, why is this department not? Um, not keeping up with the times. I think we wanted to wait till the major bond was paid off, the million five was paid off. Then we wanted to look at uh, our capital improvement programs, and then I was supposed to come before the commission and talk about uh, additional uh, employees for setting up a second crew to do some capital improvements throughout the city. You know, because I, I'm not sure if you would agree with me or disagree with me, but having 25 employees that are overseeing, uh, what, what exactly? How much is your budget per year? It's about uh, 6.3, 6.4 million. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a huge budget. And we have 25 employees, including yourself, that are overseeing five reservoirs and seeing all the work that's completed throughout the city. It just seems like, um, it seems like things are, you know, and I know, I know you, and I know that you're, uh, you're a stickler to dotting the, uh, the I's and crossing the T's. Uh, however, things are going to have to fall through the cracks. They must, with 25 employees. Um, I think that, I mean, what's the average of a water department throughout the, uh, throughout the Commonwealth? And what does Springfield have? I think Springfield has 150 employees. What does Chickabee have? I think Chickabee has a little bit more than us. I think, uh, I, and I'm not sure, they're probably in the 30s or 40s. Yeah, so, I mean, 30s. do you agree with me that I think you guys are falling short? I think that you guys are not keeping up with the times. I think that maybe you guys haven't raised water rates in a long time. I'm not sure why you haven't. Um, we've talked about, uh, you know, the different... Um, issues with fluoride, maybe revisiting that. Um, there's other ways you can sell water, um, but it's just 25 employees. I mean, at the end of the day, as a city councilor, should I feel safe uh, in regards to our water supply with only having 25 great employees? You know, I know a lot of your employees and a lot of the frustration coming from the employees. So I'm what I'm saying to you is coming from the employees, some employees are calling me and saying, you know, you know what's the story with this? You know, and a lot of these employees have many, many, many years of, uh, of work underneath their belt. So who's coming up to learn these traits? You know, you have the water, uh, you have the gas and electric, and you have linemen doing a great job, but they bring new linemen in. And what they do is they go through the process and they learn how to do it. You know, they go through the schooling, which is great, but they really learn on the job. It doesn't seem like we have anybody that's gonna be learning on the job. And so when uh, Todd's child is on the city council 
he's going to be saying, wait a second, we don't have anybody that's doing anything in the water department. What was happening here? Well, we, we will be taking a look at it, but I think the intent with the board was to keep rates, to hold rates, and to control expenses. And I think we've been getting by as far as a maintenance operation for the last five, ten years, but I think we're going to take a look at where we want to go from this point forward. But is getting by a good thing? I mean, we have, you know, got the fire department behind us. They're, they want money for overtime, and it's just overtime. They're coming in front of us asking for something. The fire department, the police department, people are coming in front of us. We never hear from you guys. And, you know, I used to think that was a great thing, but now I'm looking back and I'm thinking it's not a great thing. I mean, for years and years and years, I've sat in the city council and we don't hear from you guys at all. And, you know, not that I want to raise anything, never want to raise anything. However, there's some things you need to raise. And I, I think that you guys are not doing, um, I think you guys should step up a little bit because having 25 employees, um, I don't well, think we have some talented employees. They're all cross-trained. They have who are they multiple teach? licenses, and they're all v relatively young, too. So I, I think, again, you're right. We've got to take a look at that. We just wanted to get through this major expense. I mean, the bond that's, that's maturing this year represents uh, 35 40 percent of our budget. Right, and that's you a said huge that, number. and hopefully that we're going to be, um, uh, we're going to have the waiver for the, you know, I've been talking, we've been hearing about this waiver for a long time. What happens when the day that this waiver, when they come in and say, guess what, you don't have this waiver any longer? You know, what, what happens to us then? We go the route of filtration. Right, but everything that's built yeah. today will be used in the future. This UV facility that's being used today will be used in addition to, fil in addition to filtration, yeah. when filtration does come. And, 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 but, and the thing is, you know the running's on the wall, it's going to happen. When do you think it's going to happen? Will you, still be, will you be retired by that time, or do you think it's going to be? Hopefully. We're hoping we can get another five or ten more years. Uh, Honestly, you think we can get five more years? We're hoping that. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're working with the state. I mean, uh, as far as uh, some of the concerns of the state is our forest management program. Uh, we've stepped that up. We're looking at some additional sampling they want, raw water sampling. Land acquisition is important to the state. We, we've been talking to a lot of la large landowners. The problem is right now is money. That's the concern. I mean, there's lots of tracts of land we'd like to purchase up, but we just don't have the resources. David, as always, thank you for the job you guys do. Thank you. Linda? Thank you. Now, couldn't we Skype uh, Mr. Nadorf in from Florida? I'm sure he would really want to be a part of this meeting right now. Why? <laughs> Give him a mic. Just speaking to that mic. Linda, can you give it? Do you have a question first or do you want to go to the mic? Do you have a question with regards to the facility? Well, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to make a comment because you've been very good about providing us with the minutes from your meetings. And so all the information that you just shared with us relative to this facility, relative to the funding, and relative to how you covered the cost of it um, has been very well documented. and. My perspective on it is thank you very much. I think that your department has been one of the most effective departments in trying to maximize resources and cross-train your employees. And I, for one, greatly appreciate the approach that you have taken relative to the city being at the cap with the taxes and recognizing that we do have to contain our costs. And I just want to go on record as noting that, unfortunately, your department is one that is suffering from its success in terms of um, people conserving water. Unfortunately, as people use less and less water, the infrastructure costs remain. So we have the capacity for a city of 60,000 people. Unfortunately, we have a declining population rather than a growing population. And there's many root causes to that. But having said that, I just want it on record that I, at least for one, appreciate the approach you've taken. And I do feel for the staff that are there, I think what we owe them is a huge debt of gratitude for sticking with it, getting cross-trained, and providing an excellent service to the community. Our water ratings are great. So nobody in the city has to fear their water, as we've been hearing on the news of some other big cities. So I think 
um, as much as you are working with a lean staff, I haven't seen any evidence that it has translated into unsafe situation for any of our residents. So thank you. Well, before we get to that, Joe, anyone have a question? Joe? Just before we go into the finance, because we're, we're dealing with the filtration or the actual UV placed right now. So Joe? Other side. Thank you. How are you on it, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. David, thank you and commissioners for being here as always. Um, the department, <coughs> the day-to-day -day operation of the department, I think, are never questioned. And, and I, I respect Councilor Leahy's point, though. Sometimes we wonder how you do it with so little, but it's incredible the, the way you run the operations. And I, I know the commissioners will give you all the credit, but we have three veterans commissioner, <coughs> excuse me, three veteran commissioners, commissioners that have uh, seen the good, bad, and ugly times of the water department. I think they're they're a good support to a uh, good sounding board to uh, to work with you. I hope they don't micromanage you because I don't think it's their style, but that's okay. Um, Jimmy did hit one question um, or, or touch on something that I don't think we ever talked about. But before I get to it, just. You, when you, you had the glitch in the, in the communication between the commu computer and the uh, the new uh, UV uh, ultra UV light um, uh, treatment, w was there ever any point where you had to put extra or treat the water differently or add anything to the water, or was there any issues going on? Two log removal, which is 99% removal, to a three log, which is 99.9%. .9%. Much more efficient operation. We and we were we were also collecting data four times a day until we were able to get the two systems to to communicate. So the interface that was purchased solved that problem. It was a matter of getting it. It was a matter of programming, and that's what took the 60 days. The state required us to notify. The consumers, which we put a notice in the paper, and there's also going to be a notice going in the consumer confidence report in June, notifying them of the the reporting violation and just explaining to them what exactly happened, so that everybody's informed. And we and we appreciate that. I, I know as a customer, whenever I get that notice in the bill or notice in the mail, it always raises a flag. But then I quickly talk to you, and then the um, my concerns are. Uh, are taken care of, but it's always good to know that the quality of the water is what we've, we've delivered over the years, and that's important, I think, to everyone. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I, is it okay if I ask some questions? I don't know if I, if I get off tangent, just tell me. That's okay, I was only bluffing, I wasn't gonna stop, you know? <laughs> David, the, <clears throat> the uh, tight comedy, the manhand, the, even the drain, uh, White Reservoir, the, the inner city reservoirs that are offline, but still drinking water are, are tremendous asset to the city of Hoyoke. Um, they're, they're also, it's also a lot of land. And I know over the years people have talked about the uh, selling or, or trying to develop near some of the inner city reservoirs and trying to develop in a lot of um, anywhere, you know, in terms of uh, new, new development for, for the city, but new development. Um, I don't want to talk about that in, 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 in detail because I, I think you know you said it. It's a watershed. It's a protection area. It needs um, it needs to be part of the uh, the overhead the overall uh, plan of protecting the quality of our water. But are, are we on the same page? If I if I made a statement, can you tell me if you agree with me or disagree with me? Is the, the water department were to sell any land? Other than you know what you do in terms of, of the deliverance of uh, of water and, and or to buy any land, other than what you do in terms of what you need for the day to day operations, you it would require the city council and mayor approval. Do you agree with that? I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. Commission approval, city okay. council. And, and I ask because there's other authorities that didn't always agree with that statement. Uh, one, not that it matters, but one being a geriatric authority and. We got into some legal battles with them, and I think that's important to all taxpayers. The, the water department is is set up to uh, run off the the user rate, and um, 
<coughs> in which which we understand and, and it's important and it works and it works you know very cost efficient too thanks to 25 employees right Jim <laughs> but at the same time you know somewhere down the road if something ever happened I, I want to make sure we whoever is on the City Council whoever the mayor is that they have a have a say in that and when when you when you guys take over the sewer department you, know, you get rid of uh, the all the problems that we have you you are going to bring that into the black right Thank you, Mr. Chairman. at that right now and when we, we're, we're developing our budget so there's going to be we're looking at anywhere from 50 to seventy thousand dollars roughly in additional operating costs a year as a result of this of this uh, form of treatment the call uh, you you're saying three thousand for a month for power roughly but then thirty to forty thousand a month for the bulbs that's why I didn't understand the bulbs need to re be replaced annually uh, annually okay so we're looking at around twenty thousand dollars if not a little bit more then there's the the calibration equipment and then there's the, um, the a lot of the uh, the parts or uh, mechanisms in the UV reactors that need to be replaced there's the additional reporting um, there's also uh, the calibration so the Again, this is this is something that we're new, new to, so we don't really know. I'm guessing when I'm saying that amount, but I'm being I'm being conservative. But uh, like I said, and there's other additional costs too. The the power supply, the backup power supply that we have for this facility. There's a there's a series of batteries. Those have to be replaced every five years. That's twenty to thirty thousand dollars for batteries. I mean, that's this this large black compartment you see here. It's all batteries. It's all batteries. And then there's there's you know there's there's uh, maintenance agreements on the software for operating these these units. So there's there's costs like I said um, the costs I just mentioned to you are are what I know up front, but there could be some hidden costs. We've only it's only been operating for a few months now, so and we're finding things out, but it is it is it is functioning. It's functioning very well. Okay, and that leads me to. The whole issue in the sense of when we sat down and discussed this bond, it was 3.2 million, and then once it was up and running, it was going to help with the filtration because if we didn't do this, the next step was filtration, which was 30 million. 30 million. Mm -hmm. Which then is okay, so now we have all these other costs that are being added on annually, which, you know, if you kind of guesstimate, you're talking a little over 100,000. As you're saying 50 to 70 for certain things, but then adding all the other stuff, you're now. I'm thinking 50 to 70 thousand total, total for everything. Total, okay, total, that's what total. I want to know. There's no additional staff requirements as a result of this. The employees all have been trained. Uh -huh. It's going to be part of their daily routine. There's going to be there's going to be a lot of calibration as far as monthly calibration of the units, and then there's the analyzers that are re we're going to require weekly calibration, and, and again, there's a lot of reporting involved in, 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 in running these these new facilities. And this should potentially get us five to ten years of coverage before, or the waiver, as we keep calling it. What happens after that? If we do violate the waiver, then the, you know, the next option would be filtration. But we're hoping that along with Quabbin, the MWRA, we're, we're, we're going to continue as long as we possibly can. When we built this facility back in 1997, nobody knew that we'd be sitting here 17, 18 years later with the waiver. So we're hoping that our success will continue. Which... I understand that. 
No, no, I'm not blaming Pa. I'm, I'm not blaming you guys. I'm, I'm. You got to picture everything. You know, stop looking at the tree, look at the forest. Which is, if the waiver goes, I'm saying right now we're great, and there's a guesstimate of a five to ten year that the waiver will last based on what we're doing, and maybe after that it'll keep going. Are we having any discussions is where I'm getting to if after five to ten years the waiver is gone and there's nothing else we can do? Are we trying to set up for that bad case scenario other than just saying we're just going to need a bond for 30 million? Well, you know, as time progresses, there's, there's new device, new forms of treatment that are coming out there. Okay that we're using less water, so certainly the footprint of the treatment facility would be smaller today than it was if we built it back in 97. So there, there are some benefits in holding out as long as we possibly can. And who's to say that we, we may not ever have to filter? We're in the same boat as Quabbin. Okay. No, I'm just bringing it out and, there, and, and it's and a discussion to have. This is the yeah, route yeah. Quabbin went. Quabbin went with UV disinfection. One of the major hurdles with fluoridation is our ability to sell to other communities. Right. That's the problem right now. So, okay, so maybe the question isn't right to say savings. If we would save a little, would we be able to generate a lot more revenue if you didn't, if they didn't have to go through that process? Well, I, I can't speak for today, but in the future, I mean, given, given the amount of resources that we have we use a fraction of our water supply in Hoyoke right. I mean we we're, we're, we're capable of treating up to 15 million gallons a day we're using just under five now so we've got a tremendous excess of water that we could sell to neighboring communities such as Southampton I mean we can look at Southampton you could look at the augmenting Chicopee uh, even though they have interconnections with Springfield uh, I've had talks with uh, with Chicopee about that being a possibility in the future. There's also the possibility with South Hadley. There have been connections or leave outs placed at the bridges. So there's a lot of possibilities in the future. I, I you know, maybe right now uh, it's not happening, but 10, 20 years down the road, I think you're gonna see a lot of these neighboring communities are gonna be in a different position. Hoyoke sitting really well as far as their water supply is concerned. I mean, you right. get some beautiful sources out there. I don't think the people really know what they have because they're so isolated. Well, at least the primary supply is so isolated. And a lot of the people in Hoyle you can see what we have as far as the in-town supplies because they enjoy those for recreational purposes. But as far as savings in fluoridation, I mean, you're not going to realize a major savings if we, we take fluoride out. You'll probably save twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. It's not a lot. A year? A year. Do you think it would help us to sell the water otherwise? Oh, absolutely. If it was out? Absolutely. It, it'd make a difference. Maybe not today, but down okay. the road, absolutely. Okay, so it would open up other avenues. Yes. And there's more and more science showing that the fluoride isn't needed in, to be added to the water anymore. And so in my, and I know Jim's done work on this too, but in the research that I've done on it, it really seems that it's not needed as it was when it was implemented because other things have changed in the marketplace. There, there's been a lot of changes, but again, I don't think that would be a decision I would make. I would leave that up to the city council and the board of health well, to make that determination well, as to where yeah. you want to go and with And my understanding is it is under the jurisdiction of the board of health. 
but we could all certainly weigh in with the Board of Health. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, so there's no other questions. Do you want to do the finances a little bit? Sure. Get something in there. Yeah, I got some charts here for you just to give you an idea as far as usage and all that information. Thank you, sir. Overview. Um, I wanted to provide fact overview. I wanted to provide you with. We did not my time close. My time water slide. Uh, that closed years ago. Or two thousand. I couldn't tell you. Power plant. Power plant closed recently in the last few years. Yeah, but my time water slide. They were a huge customer, weren't they? Huge customer. Yeah, I mean, the power plant was a huge customer. They were too. Commissioners. Make sure you talk into the mic, green light on. I think if you if you look at the the with the green, the chart with the green, I mean this this is our biggest challenge right now. And uh, this is probably one of the reasons we have twenty five employees. Because if you look at from the year 2000 to the year 2015, how our water usage, our consumption has dropped. And that drop is translated into a loss of about $900,000 over that course of time. So, you know, we're, we're self-funding. Self we don't have anywhere else to go. We go at water rates. And sometimes when you raise the rates, you, you reach the point of diminishing returns. You get people that are on the edge and the rates go up a little bit and then you get more people becoming delinquent accounts. So our biggest challenge is, is the, uh, the water usage. Every year we budget, we say, uh, okay, it's gotta hit bottom and, and even out and maybe start upticking now. And uh, I feel like Charlie Brown trying to kick the football because it hasn't. Um, so with the two cent rate increase, it's gonna allow us to uh, get over the hump uh, this year and pay off. We have one final bond payment in June for 1.5 million. And right now our free cash is about, or our cash is about 1.5 million. So it's gonna be very close, but you know, we're certainly gonna make that payment. And then in 2000, uh, we're, we're also uh, depleting our reserves, which you know, we need to have at least $400,000 $400, in reserves. If we have a, a major break in the pipe, if we have a, a problem with our, our treatment facility, we need that money. So. We're, we're going to be very low on that uh, going into 2017. And, but with this increase, we're hoping we can start building that back up. We, we knew 2015, 16, and 17 were gonna be very difficult years. Um, we had hoped that the uh, water usage would, would tick up or even, even out. And if it does that, we should be good. So with this two cents, we should be good for get through this year, get through next year, and then it depends on the variable of the, uh, the usage. Um. Peter, you got a question? Thanks, Fran, for explaining that to us. And, and I get the, uh, your uh, minutes every, every month just about, every, you know, the minutes, and it's really informative to, to read through that and to see the struggles that you're having, you know, just keeping up with paying the bills you know, with the money that's coming in. And you, you talked about the, with, with this chart here, with the, with the rates, you know, less people using less water, and you raise the rates up in, about the delinquencies, but my concern too is, will people use less, still pay their bill, but use less water, and then you get less money coming in. Is that a possibility too, you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that, yeah, absolutely. Not that they're not that's gonna pay it, but they'll pay it, but now, Instead of using ten thousand a quarter, they might be using eight thousand a quarter, yeah. just to save a couple bucks. I don't you know, it, it, if you look at this rate increase, uh, it's for for the uh, for the low rate, it's eight dollars a year. So I don't think anybody's going to make a decision based on eight dollars a year. 
for the for the average household it's eighteen dollars a year so it's not like uh, I don't think in, that's going to trigger anybody to say okay we're no, we're no longer going to flush our toilets you know for, or once once a day it's it, this is a very minimal increase and when is the last time actually that you went up in rates uh, the last rate increase was 2009 okay I, th I think it was quite a while yeah. 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 yeah that was quite a while and we you know we had, with costs going up I mean you know, people complain about milk going up for 20 cents yeah. but if water goes up two cents you know people yeah. are you say wow what do we you know it's a hit um and and with you know you you see the the money coming in and, and your is going out i mean you have expenses and i understand the employees you have great employees and i've i've talked to several of them and and they work hard and, and you do good work with with the employees you have we're very um, fortunate we fortunate have to have them we do and we yeah. have david and uh, butch seidel and uh, yeah. mike Graney. they do a great job and you talked about the the money you have in surp not surplus surplus money the four hundred thousand in case something major happens. Now you digging into that right now? Oh yes, you yeah, are. I yeah. Mean, to get through this year, we're going to really deplete that down to about a hundred thousand. So we we want to slowly bring that back up in two thousand seventeen and two thousand eighteen to get it back to where it should be. Right, and, and I noticed in the, in, the, in the minutes too, you have certain. Uh, sections that go out with the delinquent accounts people go out and you know, I see them on the houses the people really pretty much good with getting that paid off so the water gets turned back on uh, yeah once you turn the water off usually they come down once we give them the shut off notice uh, Mike Graney who's our business manager says about 85 to 90 percent come in about within three days within three days yeah yeah to pay it okay and and some of the, the the losses in some of these accounts and they may be some of the businesses they've had over the years you just have to write that off there's money you're not going to see yeah we we write off every year our accountant writes off probably 40 to fifty thousand dollars in bad debt i mean if there's a company that's owed money for 10 years it's no longer around there's no no reason for us to keep that on the books we're not getting that sound lean too right it's, yeah and what other, what else can the city do or, or businesses do? I mean, basically, we got so much water, we could bring in tons of people, tons of businesses, and and still have plenty. Yeah. Is, is there any way that the water department is doing any marketing to say, hey, to some incentive to have people come in, or is there something out there to get businesses uh, in that use water? Uh, if you look at, I think it's listed on number seven mm -hmm. um, we had the calpine which is a power plant gas burning power plant and they were going to build in westfield right and they were going to use raw water from the manhan and that would have brought in approximately 15 million to the over a 20-year uh, span to the water department that 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 would have solved our problems and uh last or February 8th they went to an auction they had all the permitting done they're ready to go but they had they went to an auction uh, energy capacity auction and they weren't the low bidder so basically because they weren't the low bidder that project is dead but if they were there would have been something yeah yeah we would be down here celebrating right now because but those are the things that come up you don't know when they're gonna come up but you know they are they are we have the water it may not be next year. It may not be three or four years, but it's going to happen. So and, I hit my. Fortunately, it didn't happen February eighth. <laughs> and I think I read about that in one of your minutes about them coming in and trying to do that. And uh, yeah, it, it would it would have been a real home run for us. So that is possibly something within a year or two years that something could come up like that again to be helpful. It's rare. It's almost like hitting a lottery. It could it could happen, but. Unlikely. They, they spend millions of dollars uh, getting permits, and now their permits are going to run out. So they're not going to revise that. Uh, they had one shot. Apparently, they weren't the low bidder. Right. But they, you know, they gave it a good effort, and it would have been uh, fantastic for us because they were going to maintain the pipes, uh, the old 20 inches that we no longer use. They were going to refurbish it, uh, take the raw water, and then pay us uh, a specific amount a year. 
um, that would increase by you know CPI or 2.5 percent every year. So it would have brought in uh, at least a half a million a year and then increased every year. Yeah, and also I notice about the forestry and tree management, you do get some money in from that, but not much, where they cut the trees down in your properties and your land. We have a, we have a timber sale. Timber sale, happened. right. Yeah, and it was just awarded, and we're going to generate about uh, it's $88,000. And know, as a result of that sale, we're trying to do a, a sale every year. We're also working with West Springfield and West, and Westfield. Westfield, yeah. Right, I think I read, yeah. So there, there are ways that you're bringing some funding, but this is more or less. We also have cell tower uh, revenue coming in, and we're, we're in the sixth year of a 10-year agreement, and we've already been approached by many companies. I guess it's, it's very aggressive out there as far as... Uh, you know, going forward, um, the company that, that runs it right now offered to give us a lump sum if we would extend them 10 more years. So I think we're going to be able to, to make some money there, increase our revenue there a little bit. Okay. How do we get people to use more water, the average person? I mean, that's, that's the key. I mean, you know, people, you, you go to the stores and people are buying bottled water. So if they're drinking bottled water, they're bringing it to work with them. They're not drinking city water. So. Yeah. The thing is, it used to be businesses, and, and, right. and businesses, that maybe the top 20 businesses paid 50% of the, of, of the water, rev, brought in 50% right of the yeah. revenues. They're no longer there. Now it's a residential system. And, and when you lose those businesses, it, it really became tough. Yeah. And that yeah. was over the course of many years. Many years, right. Beginning in right. the right. 80s and 90s. Right. right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Joe? Tim? There's no more questions. So thank you for coming down and updating us on everything. Is that Linda? Yes, yeah, whatever you want. That's what they're here for. Is it too early to ask about discussions relative to combining the water and sewer bills as a possibility? I don't know if it's too early. They've been talking about it, but. Uh, we're open for everything what, what the discussion is but we haven't heard anymore well I was I attended the meeting of the of Dave Bartley's committee development and government relations and at that meeting Rep Vega mentioned that it might be possible <coughs> for us to do it through ordinance rather than needing a home rule petition etc and we didn't get into a deep discussion of it at that meeting because it was a broader more general meeting but it got my attention when he said that and so you know we've had it on the table for two years to do some kind of something <laughs> that we haven't been able to accomplish so I was wondering if there is a perceived option through your department I've been working with Karen Cunha at the law department and we're looking at um, the possibility of shutting off water service for non-payment of sewer Mm -hmm. We're looking at the Legislative Act, and um, we believe that it, um, we believe we have the right, to, to, the, the Legislative Act allows you to shut, gives the poor department the right to shut off the sewer system, and, and we believe that shutting off the water system shuts off the sewer system, so mm -hmm. we're looking at that, we're looking at uh, the possibility of developing that ordinance <coughs> so that we can discuss shutting off water service for non-payment of sewer. Maybe we look at a program, a pilot program, where we try it for a year and see how successful the program is. I see that that's one of the primary concerns of this council is inability of the sewer department to collect sewer charges. And um, the success that we've had with shutting off water to collect non-payment of water charges. So I think that's something we're looking at now. We're going to be having some discussions in the next month. Uh, about 
ready, I'll be happy to file it. <laughs> Since it's been brought up, I was the one that was going down to your office with Kara, uh, starting this little uh, beating of the drum of combining the bills, not departments, just combining the bills to collect the money. Because you guys can collect the money, you shut off the water, and as you just said, two to three days, they're in. They need their water, so they pay the bill. Sewer bill, they rip in half and throw it in the trash, and there's no way to collect it. Which then led to sending it off to legislature, which then led to all that problem. But in the meetings that I went to down with you guys, there was one concern that you brought up, which was if we shut off the water because of a sewer issue, we are now losing revenue to your department. That was it from the combined. Absolutely. That was right. And, and that and that's right. Costs. And that's. That's yeah, that was a huge concern. Customer, paying customers, and we're, you know we're just talking about how we are looking for revenue. So that's the other side of this. So maybe it works having the people come in and pay the. Maybe it stops people that are paying their water bill from going ahead and, and doing anything. Which now, since you know there's this pilot, which may be a start of an answer, which would be we try it for a year, which is we combine the bill. In order, in order to shut it off if you don't pay either. What, but let me get to it. Have you asked Kara for some type of fee for you? Well, we, we, we collect the shut off fee. What we wanted to target was accounts that are delinquent in both water and sewer initially, not just sewer. We may look at, we may look at the, the, some of the, the larger delinquent sewer accounts, but I think what, what we want to do in the, uh, in the infancy of this program, if it does go forward, is focus on the consumers and the accounts that are delinquent both in water and sewer. And the money that we generate would go to the water department because we, we would be, we would be the, uh, the, the department that would be shutting the water off if it came to that. It'd have to be, you know, there would have to be, we'd have to work together with the, the DPW as far as the notification process. There is a lengthy notification process, as they're called. And uh, I just want to remind the, the committee that we, we lean on the properties too. The water department doesn't have the ability to shut everybody off for non-payment of water. There are, sent, there, are, it, there are circumstances where you have elderly, where you have infants. Yeah. So in those, in those instances, we lean properties. So I, I don't want, I don't want the, this committee to think that shutting the water off is going to solve all of sewer's problems, mm -hmm. sewer department's problems. It's not. But it will, it will help. Because we, like I said, we have that, that those issues too, as far as uh, shutting off for, for right. And I agree with you. I'm not saying to shut everyone off right away, and or and all the money's going to come flowing in. It, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's another option, which then the concern, and I took it very well, which was shut it off. We're not bringing our revenue into it, and we just saw the, you know, the table that doesn't look <laughs> good to us. So adding in some type of fee. I know you got a shut off fee, but now you're taking on another mission, can you, in the negotiations, increase your fee a little bit? Because it's not so much shutting off for water, it's shutting off for two. So does that increase the fee two times? Or, you see what I'm getting at? In order to try and help you ad somewhat address that concern. I'm not saying shut off water to everyone, and you know, seniors especially, but trying to forecast some type of number to help you is what I'm getting at. Whatever we do, this is very preliminary because we haven't had this discussion with the board. We haven't really cleared on anything. But whatever we do, we would certainly cover our costs. Okay. And we wouldn't be looking to make any money. We'd be looking to help, but we wouldn't be uh, able to lose any money. So we would take all of that into consideration, what we need to do to reduce costs. Okay. And also, you know, the liability issue of how to pay the Those are, those are things I guess that are Joe? The, the problem with the liability issue, <clears throat> and this is where the, um, we asked the state, the city council, to give us the language that would allow the water department to do this and to do it uh, legally. The state is not acting on that, and that's what the DGR committee, um, chaired by Dave Bartley, but with four other members, talked to their representatives, and they want us to go under the act of combining both departments, which is not on the table for all, for all the right reasons. And, and the third option is what David talked about, is just doing it, which 
I've heard now for about half a year that we can do it. I, I think the threat of shutting water off will generate revenues in both departments, and I don't think you're going to lose that much consumption as you're as you're afraid you might. Um, I, I think you know it's the same thing as driving into South Hadley and slowing down because you know Roche's going to be over there with the radar gun. If you threat, threaten someone, you're going to shut the water off. Those bills are going to get paid. But we need to at least try it. You know, we need to do something because in the long run, if we don't, the sewer department is falling apart and we will start looking at combining departments. And I don't think you want to do that. And I don't want to see it because I think it's going to destroy what is a wonderful department in terms of the, uh, the water that we own. And uh, the entities like United Water, they don't care about sewer in Hoyoke. They want to own the water rights in Hoyoke. Yep. And that's what they've always been after. Make a motion. Yep. With. And just on before Jimmy's motion, because Jimmy made probably the key point, and it actually is number eight on your list, 2000, in fiscal year 2000, 48 full-time employees, today 25. You know, 5,000 acres of land, uh, not saying, I'm the guy saying doing hiring freezes to try and figure out the budget problem, but you know, Jimmy and Joe are making the point very clear. If you dwindle it down to where no one's working, you, know, you only can do so much as a person, cross training or not. The issue is if things start to fall apart, it makes an easier argument and an easier target. Don't want that to happen. Just um, whatever we can do to help you is, is what I'm going to say. Motion complied. The order is complied. With. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. All opposed? Thank you. Next, make a motion move item agenda number two uh, from the table. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Uh, fiscal year transfer $51,970.76 from 2014 bond principal to pay liability insurance. Come on in. <laughs> and then Sandy, number three would be you as well. Um, we won't take it off the table yet. We'll do one at a time. But the next one would be 310000 from bond principal to uh, pay firefighters. So just to know that that's coming in order. Okay. All right. So turn it over to you. you want to tell us a little about what's going on? Um, well, looking at the budget from 2014 to 2015, can you hear me? Um, there was a, I'm going to say clerical error. The wrong principal was picked up. And then actual, when um, Bellamy looked at the numbers, we had put in the wrong numbers, and therefore we have this overage. Overage? Or, yes. Isn't that what we're talking about, the 51,970? Well, yeah, 51,970. You're saying in 2014 bond principal, there was an error in the calculation or the input right when you look at the book and my apologies the numbers are very small so 15 16 gets picked up 16 got picked up instead of 15 for the principal and that would be on um on the 51,000. i believe it would be uh, a multi-purpose bond it was So we over calculated Basically, in that account by right. 51,907.76. And in, in answer to all of them, that's what happened. The wrong principle was picked up for the um, budget, for budget purposes. The 51 and then the, the 310, I believe. Also. So it happened twice? Yes. And it didn't get corrected until we did the actual payment. When we looked at the, the bond payment book, 
then we noticed that there was an error in picking up the wrong principal. That was when the budget was set up for 2000, uh, the budget for 7-1-2014 through uh, June 30th, 2015. We picked up the, I, mm -hmm. the treasurer picked up the 2016 numbers. Right, right, but when was it discovered? Um, probably, I'm gonna say around August or September of 2015. Jimmy? Yeah, thank you. So the mistake was 51970 and 310000 Yes. So On principle. Okay. So what, what what kind of safeguards have we put in place that this won't happen again? Um, we are now, um, well, I can say I'm double-checking my numbers. That's for sure. Um, uh, the bond council has sent a bigger book with bigger print. So that will... I'm going to tell you right now, it will not happen again. Um, that's for sure. Because these seem to be quite large mistakes. Yes, they so are. So if, 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 if Bellamy didn't catch this, we would have been out this money? No. No, no. No, we have. I, I over budgeted okay. the principal. So basically, due to that error, there really would be more free cash. I see. Okay. All right, but we do have safeguards in place now? Yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. Linda? Yep. So is there some reason why when this error was discovered in August that the money was not then transferred into free cash? Well, we were still in the process of our audit and the bond council, so mm -hmm. it took a while. I think maybe we, we might have discovered it but wasn't sure in August, but then we were definitely sure when he did the six-month um, uh, calculations and that was when December when was the outside audit done completed or we're still working on it the but last they, one uh, for 2014 um, I believe Probably September, October, okay. something like that. And they didn't find it. Bellamy found it. Actually, the treasurer found it. Okay. Yeah, we. Katie found it. Right. right. We pointed out, but then we wanted to make sure that the outside auditors, because there was also a discrepancy between <clears throat> the outside auditors' numbers of 400,000 and then our numbers, so we didn't want to go running and saying, hey, we found all this until we knew it was actual. Now, if this was paid to bond, or it was paid to principal, I guess my issue is if we overpaid. We didn't overpay. It was a it, number. It was just a number. It's a number. It's okay. a number that we pick up that we say, okay, this is what we're projecting that we're going to have to pay interest in principal. On some of these bonds, we just pay interest. We don't pay principal. Right. So that's what happened. It was projected wrong. Okay. I see where you're going. Yep. So just from an accounting point of view, yep. and I'm not an accountant, but I've dealt with a lot of audits, to me, I'm very uncomfortable with the money going from a bond principal account into an expense without it going into free cash. Because to me, it should be going into the free cash first because we've already taken payments out since fall, haven't we, for some transfers? For, for transfers yeah. for free cash, yes. We can right. Do. And so this really <clears throat> should have been part of the free cash pool once it was determined that it was available. I would right? think so. Bellamy says no, you say yes. So. Bellamy, you got to be on the mic. Come yeah, right come in. in. Send the mic. Or stand at the mic, whatever's comfortable for you. you know, basically, everything in the budget book is considered an expense, uh, whether it's paying bond interest or bond principal. All the lines in the budget book are the same, so you can move anything around that you deem appropriate. 
right. because these are just budget numbers. They're not actual numbers. They're budget numbers. And in her case, for this particular bond, the first two years, the the payment was twenty thousand dollars, and then it jumped to four hundred ninety-five, and that was the confusion. She picked up the year where it was four hundred ninety-five thousand instead of twenty thousand. I understand what a budget is, but my point is it really should have been in free cash. Because it can it only go into free cash when it's an actual. Error. This was a budget number, not an actual number. So it can't go into free cash till it's actually been spent or not spent. So it doesn't exist. So it doesn't exist. It, it's no, not real. It's no, it's not real. Yeah. It's not, it's not real. But it's, it's a budgetary point, number. As of December, it was real. As of it December, is real. well, as of December, she had spent less than budget. Right. So it is, is available. It's available, but it can, it's also available to be transferred, just as any right. other one of these transfers are. Okay, and so that's all we're saying is we're. Different. This is just okay. a budget transfer from one account to another. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Peter. Thanks for coming <laughs> on, and, and basically it's a it's a numbers error. Yes. Basically. Yes. And if you did make that error, the money would have been more money. We would have been less in the hole. You wouldn't if have we had were what, one point eight million in the hole or two point whatever, it would have been our deficit, right? In the budget year, it just would have been that much less. Correct. So we wouldn't have had to transfer that money somewhere else. Right. You would have had to find more free cash or to to balance to the budget balance, to, to cover balance. that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But it's not just those two. The, the the total that you're transferring is more than that, isn't it? Um, I believe. The number we got here is five hundred and five thousand. There's one for fifty-one thousand. Is that different? You're yeah. gonna what you're gonna have is before us tonight is the fifty-one nine seventy and then the three ten. Right. Okay. And they're gonna then go to those line items. One is to pay the firefighters, as we learned, their budget was done wrong. Number wise. Number wise, right? Right, and all that. And then the other part's gonna go to liability insurance. What I gave was what Bellamy sent by email, which is their projections for the rest of the year, which is uh, 142.986 for 394 High Street, which is a claim that's going to come out of bonds as well. And that's not on our agenda tonight, but. No, it's not. But since, I mean, since we're talking about the bonds, is that. Was that part of another error, or is that actually a bond itself? Because the other two are represented, 310 and 5170. Right. Those now represent the mistakes we just talked about. The total of the mistakes was 505,200. Right, okay, that's, okay, that's what Peter's asking. That's so not counting. Okay. There was one big one for 495, and then there were two little ones that add up another $10,000, roughly. Okay, so, so the, the total, total of the three was 505,282. Okay, then I'm just trying to make that clear because I know that we stated is that it was two errors at 310 and 51, but it's, really there was. It's, the, it's either two or three errors, but here's how we're, we're using it in three places. Right, and the total is 505. That's correct. Okay. That's what you wanted. Okay, thank you. Joe? Sandy, Bellamy, both. <laughs> Joe? Hi. <laughs> Um, when when Katie found this, I, I think what's throwing throwing me off, maybe us off, is what budget is it in? It's the fourteen fifteen, right? It's the fiscal year two thousand sixteen budget, the page for all of the bond principal and interest payments. I'm current not budget. I'm not quite sure what your question is, but that's my well, answer. Well, the current budget. We, current budget, yes. The current budget. The current budget. Yeah, so two, it's, fiscal it's, year 2016. Because it says 2014 here. That's what's right. throwing and me that's off. That's what's throwing us off because it was in. Oh, because that's, it's the bond that was issued in 2014. Thank you. Right. And, so and this, for, we're for dealing with the current budget. And, that, that's, that's, those starting, were. Yes, right. Because so those were good confusion. questions up here. And yeah, right. if, if you don't understand we're in the current budget, it throws everything off. Yeah. And the liability insurance is, is the city liability insurance? Is that where it's going, the first one? City auto liability insurance, yes. Thank you. There's an invoice here that explains what it's going to. I don't know if you have it, but it's the final installment, the auto policy, and the endorsement, the pollution tax, and the other endorsement. And we are underfunded in that? We were level funded and the policy went up significantly. 
as did my own. So it's about the same percentage my own went up, which is like 15 or 18 percent. So I wasn't surprised, but not happy. So the cost went up. The cost went up, and we didn't have to increase the budget. Right. The budget was essentially flat. And then suddenly we get this this bill because we had paid most of it. Well, anyway, let's not go into that. <coughs> Can, can you remind me how much we took out of the stabilization fund earlier in the year? $450,000 for the, for the um, ba budget balancing. Mm. Was, approximately it was like 400, yeah, 450000 around numbers. And, and since we were pressured into doing that, we found a million dollars in the budget. 500000 in the insurance account, which came in for transfers, and now 500000 in the bond principal account. So the 500 was before we did the 450. The 500 was before we did the 450. Yeah, but it was, it was, it wasn't, I understand on this question, it, it was still It was used. found money after. We, well, no, that was before we made the transfer. Still, it was all, it was all part so of the conversation. It was the part of the transfer. You understand yeah. the point yeah. I'm making? Yes. My, my confidence level is very low and for us to be pulling money out of the stabilization fund and then finding this kind of money in a budget that we were told was a starvation budget is disappointing. Now, with regards to stabilization, we were given the option of 750 and then the 450 is what we ultimately chose. There was like three different options. And the last one was the no-no, which was like only 150000 or something like that. That's the one I want. Yeah. So the 750 along with now this type of money being found, would have been, right to say, too much out of the stabilization that was needed in, in theory, looking at rough numbers. But that, that's part of the capital outlay plan that you're going to have for five years. That's, we're still waiting for that one. So my answer to that was yes, thank you. That's, that's what I was looking for. All right. Um, any other questions on this? Make motion has been complied with. No, well, no, they're, they're looking for transfers right, if you want transfer. to approve it. Can mo motion to approve the, uh, the transfer of 51000 well, Remember, only, the only on the table right now is the 5197 Right, that's it. And that's going to go to liability insurance, which pay the said increase. that the cost just increased. So is there a motion for the first one? A motion to uh, transfer 51970 from bond to 2014 bond principal to liability insurance. And that was seconded? Yes. All right, motion is to approve transfer. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5 -0. Now make a motion to move from the table item number three, which is the 310, which is from bond principal to pay for the firefighters, which now will have the chief come in, or stand at the mic, however you feel. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? All right, so now we know where the hiccup was to find the money. Now let's talk about by applying it over to you. Good evening. <laughs> um, as discussed, we are we have a shortfall of about three hundred and ten thousand in the firefighter line item, and that's attributed to uh, the uh, two thousand twelve Safer Grant, which expired in on June thirtieth or July first of two thousand fifteen. The uh, grant expired, but we were able to get a waiver to spend all the money down in that grant. Uh, there were still unexpended funds in the grant. So by getting the waiver, we could actually e extend that grant out another three months. So my administrative assistant uh, did a uh, audit. Everything was kosher. Um, we started spending into the next quarter, and when she started doing her audit at that time, which was around December, she found that there was a shortfall in that firefighter line item. So we started checking things out and realized that the funding was never actually put back into that line item for that safer grant. Um, 
So fortunately, we could spend it down, and uh, they found reserve money. So we're able to come in here now and ask for the money to put into the firefighter line item. All right, so just to back up, save for Grant, you had two of them. Yes. So this is the 2015, then you had a 2016 one. This is a 2012, 2012 and we have a 2014. Um, on both grants, the total amount was $1.7 million. Back, I'm going to stop you there. Sorry, Chief. I just want to make sure we understand each grant. Yes. Grant one was 2012 for how much? One second. That total amount is $668,155. All right. Grant number two was 2014. The first grant is for five firefighters, full salary and benefits for two years. And the 2014 grant was $1,069,048, and that's for eight firefighters. Two years, full salary and benefits. And if I may, those are very difficult grants to receive, um, so I'm very proud that the Holy Fire Department received those grants. Jan, just making sure we get the numbers right. So with these grants, it's five firefighters, two years, eight firefighters, two years. Correct. Is there a mandatory to keep them on after the two years? No. Or So once the grant's off, we technically could, in essence, it would be layoffs. Exactly. Okay. So I remember with another grant for the police, we had a mandatory requirement for like one or two years we had to keep them on. But we're kind of we're at the point now where we've there's so few personnel at this point that as we as we spoke of when the grants were received that through attrition we're down to a number where we're we're probably pretty level right now where we're, where we're at. So the grants in essence kept services up, saved the city 1.7 million dollars, and got us to a point where we are right now. So here's my question: We need the 310 to fill the gap of the underfunding. Correct. Is that for the 2012 grant or the 2014 grant? The 2012 grant. All right. And we're, pa we're past the two-year requirement for them, right? Yes. So I, the reason I'm getting at this is if we violate a grant, and we learn this through the library project, the state can come back and whack us. So I just want to make sure we're in full compliance. I know the 310 will get us there. I'm just making sure we guarantee that we're we're safe with the state. Have we discussed it with the state that this is all? This is fine because we still have the grant for the eight firefighters, which keeps our staffing to where it's supposed to be at this minimum right now or maximum, however. Um, that's the real number we're looking at. So if that falls below and we're actually at that level now, which is less than we were four years ago. So let's talk um, about the levels. Where Where are you at now? We're at a total of 115 firefighters. <coughs> you need, with regards to the last grant, to be at 115 or? At 115. So we're right there now. And if worst case scenario we said we couldn't find this money, it didn't exist, and we didn't give it to you, what would happen? Uh, then we would have to lay off probably nine firefighters and the federal government would want their 1.7 million dollars that's what i was getting at okay right, thank you. <laughs> jimmy yeah thank you so chief uh first question is so when uh, you internally you did that audit and you found that this uh the discrepancy for what four hundred fifty thousand dollars. what uh safeguards are you putting in place that um you're not going to have a, a mistake like this once again well um we're going to make sure we check all the numbers when they come from the auditor's department, make sure everything is uh, where it's supposed to be. So, I mean, is there a, a procedure? Is there an SOP? Is there something to put in place? Because for tonight, you know, uh, from what I'm hearing, it's just mistake after mistake. And um, when we're dealing with a municipality with so many different employees, I mean, we just heard about the water department. They only have 25 employees. Right. You know, these, uh, these departments have a lot more uh, moving parts. We can't make... It just it's not we just can't make mistakes like this especially with the, the amount or the lack of money that the city is has in its coffers at this point so I'm just wondering if you have any sort of uh, uh, 
SOPs or procedures in place? We have no SOPs or procedures. The procedures will be that we will check every individual line item from the auditor's department from this point on. What we primarily do is put in the numbers that we need, and all the numbers come from the auditor's department, and that's what we use for our, our numbers. So now I will have to go through with a fine-tooth comb on every line item to make sure it's exactly what it is. Yeah, because the numbers don't lie, but the people no. who make put the numbers in, they're the ones that make mistakes. Um, grants, like, let me give you a quick story. So Bill Clinton was in office. He was the president, El Presidente, and he gave these cop grants out. City of Springfield, they ate it up. They loved it. And afterwards, when they ran out, they had to lay off people. Where the city of Hoyoke didn't do that. Um, when we get grants that, um, that go for uh, expenses, then we know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. It's not the end coming train. You know, we have to be very, um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We have to be very cautious in taking these grants. Now, this grant, the combined was for $1.7 million. Is that what you had said? Yes. And so, uh, hypothetically, as Todd asked, if, if we didn't, if we don't give the money, then we have to pay back the federal government $1.7 million. That's in the grant? Yes, you have to keep a certain level of staffing. Um, we're lucky, the fact that we do have um, some great firefighters who are retiring and enjoying their life. So we will have slots for these positions, these people, um, to serve on, which is a good thing. Um, it just it, it always very it just makes me weary because I've been here a long time now and when we we get grants for expenses that we know that are only gonna last two years or five years it's always a very cautious or scary thing. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks. So, when is this next grant running out? This June. This July first, June thirtieth. Thirtieth. Yeah. So yes. at that point, we will have no further obligation relative to the federal minimums. Correct. And but, we will have no grant funded positions in the fire department. Correct. But you are at a level now where you are at the minimum staffing of the fire department. This is what the, the brownout's going. Now. Yes. So get you're, it, this gets us through June. Correct. And there's going to be some tough decisions after that because you're fire protection is going to suffer if we go any lower. You're so not I just kidding. want you to be aware of that right now. See that every day on Facebook. Right. No, but the I thing mean, is, to her point, I'm sorry to jump on. This is not us, the city council, that are doing this. This is you as the uh, administrator of this department. I mean, so when we see posts that are left and right about us on Facebook, right. that's not accurate, that's not fair. So that should come from the top down saying that's not true. As far as? Well, it appears that the city council are the ones responsible for these brownouts. Brownouts are budgetary. Exactly. If we have no funding, we right. can't. Yeah, that Facebook is a gossip site. But we People didn't, are going to say what they want to say. We didn't disagree so. with anything you wanted for your budget. We gave you everything you wanted. Did we not? You gave me what was in the budget. My prior, my first budget to the mayor was much more than what so it was. So it's not our responsibility. I am not blaming the city okay. council. I'm well, giving other you are. the caution that's <laughs> going to happen. Um, my point is we have a limited amount of money, and nobody's got a money tree. So there's no point in like you pointing a finger at us or us pointing a finger at anybody because we're all in it <laughs> and we got to work with it. So we have some departments who over the last 10 years are, have been cut in half and we have some departments that have not been cut at all. Only one that I can think of, but, <laughs> and not yours. <laughs> but um, the reality is, and I know there were cautionary voices <coughs> when we took these grants, that we were going to get to the end of the grants and we weren't going to have the money to fund the grants. And those cautionary people spoke in 2012 and 2014. And unfortunately, there's some people who kept thinking every time we got around the next corner it was going to be better. But there were many of us who saw the trends and understood that the trends weren't going in a good way. And you're right, this next budget is gonna to be tougher than the last budget. And I just hope we're all gonna be rowing the boat the same way because that's what we're gonna to have to do to get through it. And if we start just dragging the money out of the stabilization fund, it'll just be that much quicker we have a receiver. So we either have to work it together to run our own city or we'll have somebody else running the city. And so, you know, we're stuck between a rock and a hard place again with getting boxed into a corner. 
now with the grant and with the requirements under the grant. So, and this is like 10 for 10. <laughs> so that's all I have to say, not a happy day. I, if I may, we, the fire department has been cut. So we have reduced I our budget. I said you were not okay, the, so, the one department and, that was not I, cut. And, Another thing for the record, I never said that the city council was at fault for why the fire department. No, I didn't got, say you. I just, but that's that's the feeling that I get right now. Yeah. So no, it's not you. Okay, all right, thank you. It's Facebook, chief. You know, yeah. The best thing about Facebook, if you don't go on it, you don't have to worry about it. Gossip book. It's true. Um, these are tough times, and I appreciate everything is being said. But what I really appreciate is the fire department, whether it's the brownouts or whether it's a working with your budget is attempting to help us get through this crisis. Um, when, when we talk about the bare minimum federal, um, federal in, when we talk about the bare minimum federal standards, we're talking about keeping seven apparatus online. At the same time, we do medical first responders. We have the attack units that go out there, and we always have a discussion of the uh, the ambulance service itself, which is on the table, but not obviously not part of our budget yet. And, and budgets come and go, and budget is a moving target. We learned this evening, you know, with what the, the prior discussion on the bonding, which relates into this discussion as far as where the the found money is going. And, and that's all fine. That's how we survive budget crises. But seven apparatus is what we're talking about. When we cut a budget, that doesn't take an apparatus offline. It may temporarily a brownout may put an apparatus offline, but it doesn't take an apparatus offline. When you when you address the lack of revenue, when you adjust the services that we provide, you have to do exactly what you just said. You you take and change the ordinance and take an apparatus offline. And then we have enough firefighters to put three or four per, per apparatus. But we have less apparatus. Okay. Which fire station do we want to close first is the question that we're going to face. Not cut the budget. Which fire station is going to be closed first? I, for one, don't want to see any fire station closed. And I will fight to provide the services in terms of what we need in terms of apparatus medical first response for heart attacks for people who are in dire need when our vehicles beat the ambulances nine out of ten times. And I, I will never say I'm sorry from a budget point of view that I fight for service. And I commend you and the firefighters for what you do in terms of the service you fight. Now let's get back to the budget. You said if we didn't find this $300,000, you'd probably have to lay off nine firefighters. Correct. The city would have to lay off 13.5 firefighters or 13.5 bodies. We're self-insured for unemployment. Every one person you lay off for that initial year, we have to lay off another half a person to generate the money for unemployment. So th th this is a bigger crisis than, than just, you know, just looking at the fire department. The, the tough times of using grants, I, I think, is understandable. Typically, I would tell you not to use a grant to pay a firefighter or a police officer or anyone. It should be used to replace um, or to fill in when necessary or to do special uh, duty assignments. But I think the fact that you've been able to use the grants and keep the fire department alive is, is, is a special part of your efforts to, to keep the service that we need and that this city is... is I believe the residents are demanding that they that they have that type of service and it's not going to be easy if we don't make up and, and I think the revenue part of our discussions with the rest of this year is going to show where the City Council is in terms of new revenue we're spending you know over a million dollars over the last three years because we're offsetting the sewer fund instead of sending it to the fire department that's wrong and I think that's why firefighters are upset, because they know we're offsetting the sewer fund, the sewer, instead of, instead of that money going into the fire department budget or the police department budget. That's the revenue we need to generate, and that's the revenue we can generate. And there's other areas we can do it, too. It's nobody's fault that the Mount Tom coal plant came offline. We lost $54 million in taxable revenue over the last three years, 54 annual in taxable revenue. You don't make that up overnight, but you work together, and thank you for working with us. Thank you, sir. I go along with almost everything Joe said, even Facebook. I'm not on Facebook, so. 
what you said. And I don't want to be on it either. Chief, thanks for, for coming down and explaining this to us. I, the one question I had, you talked about um, your employee finding the money, about spending it down. Can you explain that to me a little bit, uh, the grant, spending it down towards the end of the year? Through the uh, grant process, they give you the lump sum of it was $668,000. Um, through that two-year period, we did not spend the total 668000 So there were funds left over, we, and they gave us the ability to spend the rest of those funds out. So it gave us an additional three months of salaries for five firefighters. Okay, and and the three hundred and ten thousand. How did how did that find? Do you mean to get to the end of the fiscal year, the money wasn't there? Correct. Is that what that was? Correct. And she only found that out by doing what the audit. The she does a quarterly audit, and so the first audit was from uh, three first three months in the fiscal year, and everything was fine. And then the next three months, she saw the shortage on that in that line item. And that's when we started revamping and looking at the numbers and figuring out where it was short. And the shortage was that the amount was supposed to be put back into the budget for those five firefighters in the beginning of the year. Okay. And, and so it's basically that money is paying for those five fire, firefighters. Yes. Till the end of the fiscal year. And, and you can explain with the, with the grants, and, I, and I'm glad um, our chairman brought that up about the money thing and about if you don't have this, the amount that you have to lay out people and then you have to pay the money back. Right. You know, and I understand that. You know, you talked about the grant with the library and, and everything is written down saying that you got to do certain things to keep this, the funding. You have to keep a minimum, minimum. amount of firefighter okay. staffing. And with the retirements, these basically people that were on the grants, these two, 13 employees, whatever, sort of just fit right into the... Yes. So there wasn't really any, through attrition, there wasn't really any more money that had to be paid. I mean, it's a part of the budget, exactly. but... Exactly. Exactly. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. So if I'm understanding it correctly, the only way that you can meet the minimums of the grant is with the staffing configuration that you have from now till the end of June. There's absolutely no other way to meet the minimum correct. requirements of the grants. That's correct. We are if at we the bare minimum. We anything in any way to accomplish meeting the minimums. We are, at, we are at the bare minimum. There's no more. We can go no lower. That's, no re We are at the bare minimum. Or anything. Thank you. So God forbid somebody gets hurt or whatnot, and I hope that doesn't happen, but um, what happens then? Do you have people you can pull from the, um, is there like a, a list of people that have gone through the academy or whatnot? The bare minimum is the, the budget for 115. That's where we're at. If somebody's hurt, they're still in our oh, budget. Okay, okay, so, okay. Yeah. But, um, so say if somebody retires, they'll let you know, and then you can pull somebody up. As long as you have Correct. somebody in the queue, right? Correct, as long as they're in the queue. All right, and so hypothetically, if it was perfect world, how many uh, uh, men and women would you like? 88 firefighters. And You're looking eight? at 100. I'd like to get 128 total. So 88, perfect world. we have what now? Right now, we're budgeted for 80. We're down to 77, and we're looking to hire three more. Wow. Okay, thank you, Chief. Yep. Chief, just quickly on some stuff. Um, With regards to the brownouts, what other measures have you done for cutting costs? Um, the deputy chief's aid has been uh, moved online, so that's saving money. And the brownout or shutdown of Engine 2 intermittently whenever there's not appropriate staffing to fill it. And roughly, the measures you guys have taken, guys and girls, um, how much has that saved? Over the, over the time of the brownouts? Well, er, er, everything that you've done, all the measures you've taken, the total impact, would you say, is, has helped the city? I would, I mean, I, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you, but I did, I did some configuration before. It saves about $210,000 in overtime. Um, but I'm sure it saves more because now we're not paying for 88 firefighters positions. So you could take that eight into the equation at roughly 40,000 a firefighter, you're looking at, you know, 300 and something thousand a year that we're saving by not having that, and, those and, personnel. And what about next year? Are you applying for grants 
Is we apply for grants day? every year, every time it comes around. This, this grant, the same grant that yes. we're so you're going to apply for again. Thoughts on it, probabilities. Uh, it's it's a very competitive grant. So for us to receive two grants in within four years or two years, it's really a big thing. So I I don't think we'll get another grant myself, but maybe not get one. Okay, I'm just you know yes. trying to factor it in, and then seeing how it was brought on. Uh, last night and it's something that i filed something that counselor president has filed with regards to the ambulances yes in essence if we were to take that route how many would the city need you know if you're talking in a backup capacity well i i'm, I'm just talking if you were to adopt an ambulance service which the fire department now runs and you know just making up the hypothetical how many would you need? How many fully equipped ambulances would you need? If we were going to run the service completely, that's a whole different ballgame than what we're looking at right now. You're going to, you're probably going to look at three or four total ambulances to, for this city this size. There's over 7,000 medical calls in Holyoke alone, um, which is a vast amount of calls. The fire department himself, we do 25 to 3,000 calls a year in the fire department. Right now, every call we go on, we receive zero for going on the call. And, and that, so. that's where I was trying to get to. If there's 7,000 a year for ambulance, and you guys are responding to roughly 2,500, and we're responding to these, which I, I want you to do, I'm not stopping you. No, no, we're good. <laughs> How do you make the differential between the 7,000 and you're only responding to the 2,500? What's the protocol? Um, the way the city's dispatch is set up, the police department is the primary dispatch or the PSAP. Any 911 calls go right to the um, police department. The police department then, in essence, sends the call to AMR, who is a primary ambulance provider for the city. Um, AMR dispatches their ambulance, then they call the fire department, and we respond to the call. So, so AMR that's calls, calls us. You. Yes. All right, so let's back or this Or we receive a call directly from the PSAP or somebody calls directly to the fire station. We right. respond. So main calls go to the police dispatch. Yes. They then call AMR. Yes. AMR potentially then calls you. I, you see a problem with that? Cause well, I no, do. that's what I'm trying to figure out. We have a contract <laughs> with AMR to go on the calls. AMR is a primary ambulance provider for the city. They receive the contract um, through the city's something to do with Holyoke Medical Center. That's why we would like to be the primary emergency medical dispatcher for the city. Our dispatchers are trained, we're ready to go. So this is why we have a lot of conflicts going on. I wanna provide the best possible service for the citizens of the city of Holyoke. The only way we can do that is to get a grip on what we're doing and send the appropriate apparatus to where they have to go. Well, okay, so that's what I'm trying to lead to. In essence, we're responding to 25 to 3,000 calls, but yet we don't get reimbursed for it. Correct. Does AMR also show up? Of those 2,500, 20, yes. 90% AMR shows up right after that, or It varies. 100%? different times they an ambulance does show up because we cannot transport patients okay so, so when they show up we have the patient prepare we do all the vitals if they have to be backboarded okay, packaged we there. do it all okay call the police they call them AR they call you you go yes. spending taxpayer dollars yes. over time everything else they show up they take the person away correct they get full payment we get zero we have a contract with AMR as a city to pay for them to do the service. Correct. So we're paying double. It's no cost. The AMR is doing this out of the kindness of their heart. It's no cost to the city. I don't want to be sarcastic. But. Yeah. I, I, you, you see <laughs> what I was. You see where I'm going. Joe, Joe. We, we, we don't pay AMR. They're, they're just a service provider. They're a service. And yeah. the, hospital, yeah, you know the hospital wants AMR because the hospital wants – the transportation is where the billing comes in, and, yeah. and the hospital wants the uh, the ambulance service to transport to Hoyoke Medical, not to Bay State or not to another area, you know, ER. When, Chief, when you say 7,000 calls, are those emergency medical calls? 
Yes. Okay. And I, I think the other factor that we, we often don't think about is the way AMR makes their money isn't just on emergency billing, it's on transportation for non-emergency, which is a big part of their, their revenue. And that's the, you know, taking someone from the hospital home, taking someone from one hospital to, to a, a larger hospital for more specific types of, uh, of needs or whatever the needs are. And those, those I'm not sure what they're called, but they're more passive transportation. Transfers. And transfers, thank you. And that's, you know, that's sometimes, depending on the length of the transfer, three, four, five hundred dollars yes. to pick someone up and give them a taxi ride. And that's where, that's why Chickabee ran their ambulance service for years, and I know it's different now. They could not make money and actually sometimes lost money because people they picked up didn't even have health insurance. So there, there's, you know, there's flip sides to all this. The medical response that we provide is so important because whether you're, you're on a fire truck or whether you're on one of our, our strikers, our firefighters are all first responders all ready to provide that immediate response. It's a shame we can't bill for that. And that's, I agree. That's my point. Yeah, for and, and if I may, I know uh, Chicopee Ambulance brings in over $2 million a year. Um, and when they say there's a loss, it's because they equate the firefighters that are hired already to fight fires, they actually go out and do medical calls, which is what we would do. So in essence, you're still paying a salary, but you're, make, you're bringing money in to pay to supplement for those salaries. So you're, you're not losing. At but, this point, we're not gaining but anything. It, but doesn't Chicopee, their money goes back in their general account. It doesn't go back into the Correct. fire department. They don't split but, it. Money don't forget the up cost front, you know, yeah. the $1.5 million just to buy the ambulance. I, it's not $1.5 million. I can get numbers on those for you. It's definitely not $1.5 <laughs> million. Um, but I could definitely get numbers. I know that there was a proposal out there for a backup ambulance to get us started. You said you wanted seven ambulances. I'll take four. seven, but no, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, if, I mean, if we could start slow and see how it operates, we go to medical calls now. We have 80 firefighters that are EMT or above. The future of healthcare is community paramedicine, where firefighters will go to someone's house, the hospital or whomever provides a service will pay for you to go there, do vitals, whatever they need to do, meds, make sure everything's safe. And then that's just a service call. Imagine a Holyoke firefighter, paramedic showing up to your house, somebody you probably know, taking care of you, make sure everything's set, and then leaving, and you can call and we'll come and take care of you. The way it should be. The way it should be. That's community paramedicine. That's billed through the insurance companies, which makes money. That's we can't the way. Go, we can't go there. We're not there yet. We're not going to go there unless we're an ambulance service. We can't get grants for ambulance or medical equipment because we're not an ambulance service. So we're 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 tied up right now. But this would require a huge ramp up of the fire department if you're doing 2,500 calls when there's 7,000 to cover the demand in the city. And I deal with AMR all the time. They eat a ton of visits that they don't get to bill. Because when they go out to a call and they help somebody up and the somebody says, no, I'm fine, I don't wanna go to the hospital, they don't get paid a penny. We do that too, it's called a lift assist. And right. we eat every time right. we go out. But you're That's doing it under you, the fire department community service municipal salaries that the taxpayers are paying okay. i'm just saying as a private business they're not getting reimbursement for any of that and there's a lot of your staff that work for amr so either way it's <laughs> amr so, i mean you know it's the same people they are getting paid oftentimes it is a business they are getting paid or they would not be here Right, Why but would I'm you be saying there's, so. there's a lot of activity in the business that is not necessarily reimbursed also. I understand that. Um, and they call it a payer mix where you don't know if that they have a, what type of insurance or whatnot. They call it a payer mix. And all these numbers have been ran. The proposal points out that we're looking at the lowest possible figure we could make off of that. And we'd like to give it a shot. Is there a motion on the table for this one? The motion is to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you.
I know there's another one for me now. <laughs> yeah, Chief, we're skipping that one. No, I'm like, I'm like, uh, make a motion to remove item number four from the table. All those in favor? All opposed? No. Um, transfer of 105000 from free cash, so it's not transfer from line items, it's from free cash to pay overtime. Chief? Obviously, when I came in with my budget, I said 400000 was not going to make it. Um, we're currently down to $28,119.80 in our overtime budget. Um, if we have a major incident right now, that could be gone very quickly. The 105000 will allow us to at least keep the brownouts enacted and see how far we go with that. I projected that we probably need about 150000 but depending on what happens, any major incidents or whatnot, we we potentially may get through with the 105, but I can't predict the future, so I'm going to go with the, with what I what I have now is 105 to try and get through, and go to that point. I don't have a problem with the 105 understanding the the, uh, the request and the need. Um, we, we still have a request from the police department on the table. That's going to be changed. I'll give you an update on that after this. Okay. So it's changing from 200 to one. Because the point was, which which is good to start, but the, but the point I wanted to make was, you know, it's it's February and, and we're we obviously we're going to deplete free cash pretty soon. And, and I just want to have a make sure we're all on the same page as to what's going to happen. And I know we're going to have hear some good news from our two youngsters over here in the corner when we look at all these uh, needs of our department heads who showed up in droves besides the chief to tell us what they need. Um, you know, I, I think we're going to have some eye openers, and, and and I just want to make sure we have the correct conversation in terms of when free cash is gone. We have stabilization, and other than finding more money, not much to choose from. Well, just to, in, I don't know if you did get this sheet, Joe. We got an email from Bellamy. Oh, I guess I'm not on the list. I put them on the table. Is there an extra one? Like a, like there's, I think there's oh. only five. But um, it, it, it came in today. This is a request that we uh, put in. He put this together for us, so we thank him. Um, there have been changes via the police. Um, they're not looking for the 200 anymore. They're going to try 150. Um, as far as the buybacks, it was 168, which is on the agenda tonight, which they don't want anymore. They're going to try and do it for 135 because some people are going to carry over retirement to next year. There was an agreement to spread it out in that fashion. We just did the veteran benefits, which was 30. Uh, fire overtime is the 105 currently on the table. Uh, and then the police repair, which is 20,000, that's still in the jacket. Um, so the top part shows the bonds where they found the mistakes, 142, 310, 51, 970. Add those in, we just used the 310 to pay for the shortfall and the staffing. We used the 51 for the insurance and the 142 is for the high street project i think that's well what that's not on for tonight if you do all the bonds what you're left with is 325.17 if we approve all these financial transfers from free cash you'll be left with $88,666 okay roughly or actually no 88991 sorry i can't remember which then leads to okay. still a, yeah, what? It says Does 88, 99, 99 the sheet. This is our sheet. Yeah, this, this one says 88991. I'm just reading the sheet. I mean, I haven't taken these numbers and calculated them myself, but I'm reading what was given to us. 
<laughs> well, well do, <laughs> do roughly 58 to 88. 88 or 58, Mr. Chairman, this answers my question, and I'll no, withdraw it. Basically <laughs> zero. She's just got a different sheet. That's all. Okay. Yeah. No, no, and, and that's fine. It, it's just those would be the rough numbers. I mean, we haven't passed everything, and the police thing is. No, but I thank you because it answers. It's it's we're looking at an overall picture. That's all I wanted to know, and I appreciate that. Thanks, Linda. And I would note that it was just recently on the news that our DPW superintendent was saying he has about a hundred thousand left only in the snow account and I don't pardon <laughs> right but I don't think he has 500 in the budget Right, but the point, okay, I. If you analyze what he spent, a lot of what he spent was on salt, yep. which is for the entire state. Some of it is just to fill what's available in the estate. Yeah, that's how we always see <clears throat> Well, I get that part, but the point is he's got like half of what he has typically been spending and we can hope and pray that the rest of the winter will be like the first part of the winter has been so far um but it would be a gambling person's bet <laughs> to say that we'll get through with a half of what we've been spending it just seems like we should anticipate Days. We'll go days. by the mail. Don't day. jinx us. <laughs> this, the blizzard of uh, the blizzard of eighty uh, two and April first. Okay, 1st. so we think the snow's okay, and then we have <clears throat> um, other money requests coming in from legal. Maybe. And Perhaps. I'll read that email. Um, what we did do, my order, which is the last one, they all tie together. Sorry, Keith, for being part of it. Um, Second request that all departments report to the city council with their shortfalls. Um, people did email in saying that they're all set or they won't have shortfalls. Uh, some didn't respond at all. Uh, CARE responded that um, transferred 55000 from the uh, assistant solicitor line item to pay for outside counsel. As I indicated to the council, uh, with regard to that, I do anticipate at this time that I will still need another 50,000 about for outside counsel for the remainder of the fiscal year. As noted below, I also anticipate a potential need for additional funds for litigation and claims line item. She said the line item. Uh, at this time, barring any large claim, while these may not be needed additional funds, I expect to be uh, more or less 25,000. So you're talking about 75,000 there or less that is potentially coming from legal barring any settlements or anything else that would be the last one that I got a communication of told you about the chief for uh, police you now have the fire Kara um, DPW we haven't really heard anything yet we'll just wait for no snow That's my and There will be a retire for what do you anticipate there, Chief? What's that number? For both? No, for a total of both of them together is seventy two thousand eighty three dollars. So and that was sent to 
Yes. That was sent to uh, Ryan Allen okay, John, last fine. week. It might be in the file. He did print out a file for us tonight. So you have two retiring definite. That's going to roughly be 72000 Correct. They've already retired. The request has already gone into the mayor. So tell me if that's on this sheet that you gave us. Oh, and that's that's kind of why I made the order the way I did, which is what shortfalls have been requested, whether or not we act on them. Yeah. You know, seventy-two thousand is a requirement by right. contract. We have to pay it. So if I turn around and say, okay, do the overtime one hundred five, do the overtime two hundred or one fifty, that's free cash. We're down to eighty-eight nine ninety-one based on the projections. Lo and behold, 72000 is looming out there. That is a requirement. Correct. Third person comes along and says, I'm done too. Now it's, I'm making up numbers, 80, 86000 Down to 3000 or 2000 That's why we're looking at it. How are we doing uh, an unemployment insurance class? Do they have enough money in the budget, though? Suffolk Street layoffs began last week, so that, that was, that's going to increase it. The Suffolk Street layoffs began last week, the higher salary layoffs. Is there enough in the budget to get through the fiscal year? Thanks. So have we looked into the possibility of participating in the state unemployment program rather than self-insuring for unemployment since we've been facing these problems for at least five years now with our budget and our tax ceiling? Have we looked at that as an option? Right, but I mean, given what we're looking forward to, I was just wondering if it had ever been investigated or considered because to Councillor McGivern's point, he keeps making the point that when we're self-insured and we're paying, right. it's, and if we do have a significant amount of layoffs, it's a huge liability. Last year was the biggest hit that we got. Normally we don't have that kind of a hit and we tried to tell the school department 
don't do it that way. Right. And they didn't listen to right. us. Right, we've been in more than one Which meeting on that. Which is unfortunate. And that's what we have the problem with. We don't have control over the school department. And then we have to clean up the mess. I don't think, to be honest with you, that we're going to have that big of an issue. Um, addressing Joe's um, issue with Suffolk Street, the people that they have let go have found other jobs. So I don't think they're going to seek unemployment. Um, Chris Regan is going to another job April 1st. The only one I believe is Paul, um, and I think he'll probably look for some kind of employment. But other than that, they've all found other positions. They haven't, I don't think, applied for unemployment. So that is our Paul biggest Kula, concern. Christine Paul Regan and Paul, Paul Hyde Hyde quit. Yeah. He, he got let go? No, no he quit. So that's voluntary. Well, I don't know. He might have quit to well, go find another job. Right, right. You know, we can package it any way we want. It's just the beginning. Yeah, and I'm going to say it's the school department that's our biggest issue. And, I'm you and know, it has been for, for a long time. Right. But last year was a huge That's issue. why I've always said is a part of next school spending, you know, if they're going to spend money, if they're going to force the city side of the budget, to spend money because of the way they do business, then it should be part of net school spending. Right, exactly. Right. So with that, Thank you. Chief, um, what, what did you spend last year? So I don't have the book in front of me for overtime. Over $700,000 so last, last year. Last year was 700, I'll look it up, trust me. So yeah. Right last year was <laughs> 700, you requested this year, I requested six and got four. You requested 600, you got four. Of which, last year you spent 700, you we were approved, I think, for 500. And we, what was it again? Because I, I want to say it was like 505 or something last year. Came in for 200, but then compromised for 100 because you're able to do brownouts and other Correct. stuff. Correct. So that gave you to the seven, is that correct? Correct. It, it's seven or more. I'm, I couldn't I mean, off the I, top I, of my I'll head. I mean, I could just go with rough, yeah. rough. So by giving you this, it's almost level funding for last year. I mean, it's actually a little less. Less than level funding, yes. Because we've been on a very strict guideline of trying to do level funding across the board. Since you were undercut, we can't add to the budget. We correct. can only cut from it. Correct. So I just want to make it clear in case that argument tries to come up. You really were undercut, and we couldn't do level funding for you. Correct. So, Jimmy, did you make a motion on the 105 to approve? <laughs> Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? No. So, Jim? Yes. Yes. Jen? Yes. Yes. Peter? Yes. Yes. Todd? Yes. Linda? No. And I'll remind you when we're looking at the stabilization fund I, again I, I, in a no, month. No, no, we're not, no, we don't pick on anyone. Let's do <laughs> finance, we like All right, so, um, Ch Chief. Chairman McGee, um, I don't know if you received my email today, but I was wondering if that item could be brought up tonight in finance. It's the uh, EMPG grant. Oh, it's yeah, actually I'm, I'm adding sorry, money. I got, I got some text <laughs> on could you come in at 7. I said, yeah, not a problem. I did get the email when I walked in. We don't have it on the agenda, so we really can't discuss it. Okay. That's open meeting violation. I mean, you can send us a communication on the grant and all the things to it. I think it's for $9,000, and there's no match. It's the same grant we get every year. Send an email to all the counselors, please, or get it to Ryan to send it to everyone. I know someone does it by, by mail, regular mail. Okay. Um, so that way they can have the information, and we can take it up. We'll try and have another meeting. We'll discuss that after this to bring in and discuss it before the full meeting, but if something does happen, we can always come into that night. Okay, well I was just trying to expedite it because we, we have we items. Even if it was on tonight's agenda, it still would have to be approved at the next full city council meeting, which is March right. 2nd. So it was there's nothing we could even do tonight. We could go to right. But that's what I mean. I think he's trying to say I want to do something tonight. Well, to well, it was kicked down to committee last night at the full council meeting so that's why or last night for so i just wanted to see if i could do yeah, it tonight since i'm here done before last night's okay. meeting so anything that came in automatically goes on to the next full uh finance meeting okay 
All right, I appreciate it. Thank you for your time, I appreciate it. And I'd like to thank all the Holyoke firefighters for the great job they do. They're doing a lot of hard work, they're picking up the load, and they continue down the track. So I'd like to thank them and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next one is item number five. Make a motion to move from the table. So moved. All in favor, Aye. all opposed. I'll make a motion to give, to deny, because the chief did come back with a new number, so there'll be a new order for 135. Second. So motion to deny. Yes. All right. I'll make the motion. So motion is to deny. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? So four with one abstaining. Um, take the last two up as a package, seven and eight. So move. So, uh, move from the table. All those in favor? All those opposed? Uh, orders by Council McGee that the auditor provide a finance committee with uh, a list of all departments with shortfalls, or that all departments report to the council with projected uh, shortfalls. I did read emails. One second. Yep. Okay. So, and we just got another update. <laughs> got another update. the list of projections it's missing a couple but we got that out um, so for me I'll say that Bill. we're merging what I, I, I don't think we're <laughs> since when the photo to report to God bless the three of you to see them all listed out and if there's more revenues I'd like to we'll, see what we'll they are we keep it. asking the same questions and we just we can get file a new order. general I answers okay why eating we'll, we'll, we'll work on that too all right, so with that, make a motion to adjourn.